This is the loneliest school in the world, and today I want to share with you the story on how I got here. So a couple of days ago, a subscriber commented on my channel saying, bro, want to come with me on an adventure? Not knowing who this guy was or if he was a serial killer, I said, yes, let's do it. <laughs> so I jumped on a plane to meet Gabby, who went on to tell me there's a school located deep in the mountains of Argentina, but recent rains have overflowed the rivers and blocked the only dirt road there is, completely isolating the school from civilization and causing the teachers to run out of school supplies. Gabby's plan is to buy as many school supplies as we can fit into our backpack and then somehow land a small propeller plane into the mountains to get to the school. And that's when it hit me. I was about to entrust my life to some stranger who messaged me on the internet. What was I doing? These things crash all the time. Fuck. Do I just close the door? Yep. All right. Shut it out like a car. And then I gotta then put these lock guys it up from there. Lock it up here? Yep. Okay. These guys here. That right? one is yours. All right. Let's do this, guys. <laughs> and as we approach the runway, there was no turning back. All I could think about was how many people would head over to Burmese.com and buy some Burmese. Right after takeoff, we flew into some storm clouds and I tried breathing in and thinking of classical music, but it just kept getting worse. I breathed in, I breathed out, but it didn't work. Fuck, 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 fuck. Fortunately, it wasn't a very long trip and after some tricky maneuvers, Gabi managed to finally land it onto a small runway in the mountains. We then ditched the plane and met up with some local gauchos who were gonna take us to the school. Yeah. We had Santi, Nico, and Fede. Speak English? No, no. Nada, nada. No. Okay, okay, okay. Uki, okay, this is your horse. 12 year old. Sabrina is his name. Her name. His name. Ah. That's right. And thus, our journey to the loneliest school in the world began. Unfortunately, we were not in the safest hand. Santiago, our gaucho leader, confessed to me that this was his first time doing this trip as he needed the money. And this got me extremely worried as we'd be crossing through steep cliffs, dangerous rapids, and unmarked mountain roads. I just hope we make it alive. So there's two ways to be able to get to the loneliest school in the world. The first is on horseback like we're doing. The second is helicopter. Unfortunately, helicopters are extremely expensive, so they only use them for emergencies in case they have to heli back somebody out of there. But to be able to get supplies or let alone school utilities, the only way is a 12 hour horseback ride. But things weren't as safe as we thought. As we made our way up to 3,500 meters in elevation, we started feeling headaches and a little bit of dizziness, which meant it was important to start taking right, coca leaves. So these are coca leaves. So what you do with the coca leaves is you put them in your mouth, up against your cheek. And what they're supposed to do is they, they help you acclimatize because we're going so high up into the mountain. And this doesn't get me high. They only help me acclimatize and maybe wake me up a little bit. But while the coca leaf was doing its job, the higher we went, the closer we got to the clouds and the road started getting extremely slippery and dangerous. You all right, Gabby? This trip has really opened my eyes into how we take for granted something as simple as going to school. There's kids living out here that are traveling sometimes two to three hours every day just to learn something new. And yet back home, we complain about getting homework. Wow. So there's a couple of questions we need answered about this school. Where do the kids that go to school live? Or where do they get their food from? Where are the teachers from? Like how many kids are at this school? There's too many questions left unanswered and we gotta go find out. I'm dead. Uh, can't take it anymore. Like, when the hell do we get to this school? Oh shit, nah, fuck. I was filming and I forgot my horse. Sabrina, 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 stop, Sabrina, stop. You can't abandon me in the middle of the mountains. I'm gonna end up dying here alone. Come on. <laughs> I love you, here's my kiss. I'm sorry if I did something to offend you. Can we please keep going? Thank you, Sabrina. You're the best, yeah, you're salty. <laughs> but Sabrina wasn't my only problem. It was our guide who was getting very this Chaplin. drunk. Chaplin is his horse. This one's Chaplin. Chaplin. And as we made our way down the mountain, we came across our first river crossing, which didn't give me a lot of confidence in the hands of our drunk guide. What's happening? The, the river is a lot of water in the river. We need a guide to cross the river. I thought you're our guide. No, the guide is the one that lived here. <laughs> so he proceeded to scream in drunk gibberish at the local people to see if they'd help us cross the river. 
too drunk. Are you sure? Just a little. Stop. You're, you're our guide. Stop. Who are these people? Even drunk, he's the best guy. Fortunately, a young man came out with his horse who told us he'd show us Bien, the gracias. way. You want to know what I admire of our drunk guide? That even when he's drunk, he's able to admit that he doesn't feel confident enough to cross a river that he does not know very well. Good on you, guide. <laughs> he's saying, look at the goats. Oh, there's goats. But as we made it to the river, the mood for jokes died down. Even though the local gaucho was able to make it across with ease, one false slip from our horses, and we'd be down the rapids. Fortunately, we made it across, and we thanked our local Gracias. gaucho. Gracias, eh? And as we continued our journey, the sun set, and it started to get dark very, very quickly. Santi, is this safe? <laughs> I'm not sure. Maybe. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> oh my God. This is the worst guide in the world. We're going to fucking devil place. <laughs> Good job, Sabrina. Good job, girl. Okay. Yeah. The guy is saying that we should turn back, but at this point, I don't even know what the right way is and we're in the middle of freaking nowhere. Might as well just let the horses lead and... I don't know. All right, we got some dogs. No way! There's a house! Hola! Como va? We're not gonna die in the mountain! Yes! The kind man offered for us to stay the night and we were extremely grateful. Good job, guide. You got a safe Thank and sound somewhere. Nice. I told you. I told you he was a good guy. Alright guys, sleeping time. They were so nice that they gave me a bed to sleep in. I couldn't be more thankful. Tomorrow we gotta make it to to the school, so Let's get ourselves a good night rest. Good night, guys. Good morning. Mm. Chicken. The chicken. Mm. There's, a, there's a dog here. Hey, doggy. How's it going, doggy? Hi. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. Here are the donations from the school. Okay, nice. This knife is USA. Very cool. Good morning, Sabrina. How are you, my girl? I'm gonna scratch you here. How's that? The knife behind the ear? <laughs> Let's go on an adventure. We gotta hurry up because they told us that this week the teachers are on a break and there's a helicopter coming to get them. So we gotta get there before the helicopter arrives. As we got closer to the school, we started seeing more houses, corn plantations, and even a little girl herding sheep showing us that they grow their own food. Fortunately, we managed to make it on time right before the helicopters arrived. Ah, we made it. Welcome to the loneliest school in the world. We got all the school supplies that we bought at Vida. <laughs> Let's go give them to the school. And as we gave them their donations, they were extremely grateful that they even decided to give us a tour of the school. They showed me the cafeteria, the kitchen, and they explained that all the electricity they received was solar powered and that they had a freezer that worked on gas. They also showed me that the kids had access to television and even internet through satellite dishes that they had installed. Unfortunately, as I tried to get more questions from them, we were interrupted by the helicopter that arrived to pick them up. But what they're explaining is that they work for 15 days and then they take a seven day break. Since now the rivers are too high, the government has sent a helicopter so they can go take their break. Helicopter's taking off! Oh shit! And thus, we were left on our own at the loneliest school in the world. The last thing these teachers mentioned was that all these kids come from indigenous communities that live in these mountains. There were 50 children that attend the school every day, and they all traverse for several hours across very dangerous roads 
just to get an education. If you guys enjoyed this episode, click here on this link and check out another one of my adventures. Thanks guys. Love you.